QuickBooks Online Bill Pay tutorial. Hey there, everyone. This is Matt Holtquist with the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. Uh, so we are going through a couple examples today on how to pay bills in QuickBooks Online. All right, so this is a very straightforward thing to do in QuickBooks that a lot of people get wrong. And so we want to make sure that we do it the right way uh, otherwise, you can really mess up your books, and I see people do this all the time. Now, the typical way they mess up their books is they enter a bill, they don't go to pay bills, the pay bills function in QuickBooks Online, they just go enter what's called an expense in QuickBooks Online, and that bill just hangs out there. All right, so the first thing you're going to do, uh, you're going to go up to the new button up here, up in the upper left-hand corner, and you're going to see here the option pay bills. All right, so after you have entered your bills into QuickBooks Online, you go to pay bills, and it'll bring up the screen here that shows all of the bills that you have entered. And you can see here, uh, you know, the layout is the payment account. So first you have to choose that. So we're going to say checking. Now, if you were paying with a credit card, okay, so let's assume that instead you went online and you maybe paid this PG&E bill with a credit card, choose the credit card account that you have set up in QuickBooks. So this sample company file has a MasterCard and a Visa. And so you would choose whichever credit card you are using to pay the bill. All right. In this example, and the next steps after this are the same, but the, in this example, we're going to use checking. All right. So we're using a checking account now. This day and age, there's so many different ways you can pay a bill. You can go online, you can uh, use a debit card, you can write a check, you know, you can pay cash, whatever the case may be. But you have to really pay attention to that. You have to think about how you're paying this bill. So this one is coming out of the checking account and the payment date is going to default to today's date and then the starting check number. All right. If if you are handwriting a check, you're going to not choose this print later, and you're going to put in the starting check number. All right, so let's say that it is check number 71, and you handwrite the check. You're just going to check off the bill, PG&E that you paid. Let's say you paid one, and you're going to go ahead and save, and it's going to show it in the system, and it's going to be check number 71. That way, when you go to reconcile your bank account, you'll know that check number 71 that cleared was a handwritten check for PG&E. Now, if you do multiple bills, let's say you're doing all of these, QuickBooks is going to do the starting check number of 71 with this PG&E, and then 72, 73, 74. So you want to make sure that if you are handwriting checks, that you do them in that order, because it'll be check number 71, 72, 73, 74. And if you mess up that order when you go to reconcile, your check number is not going to match the amount that cleared the bank. Okay, so that's very, very important. Now, many people don't necessarily write checks these days. Uh, they probably either print them from QuickBooks Online or they pay with a debit card online. So let's go through that, those examples. Let me uncheck these. All right. And we say starting check number. In this case, if you're going to print from QuickBooks, you're going to choose print later. And when you go to pay these bills, it's going to uh, put it in a queue for you to print. And it will ask you at that point in time, what's the first check in the check sequence that you're putting into the printer? And again, you want to make sure you get that right, because again, when you go to reconcile your account, uh, you want to make sure the check numbers line up with the amounts that the checks were written for. All right, so let's uncheck this. Now, the other thing is, uh, if you pay uh, electronically, so if you pay with a debit card, so it's not a credit card, it's a debit card, which means it's coming directly out of your checking account. What you want to do is just change this to EFT. All right. You can capitalize it. You can put debit. It doesn't have to be EFT. EFT stands for electronic funds transfer. It can be debit card. You can put in anything you want, but just something that is consistent every time you do it and signifies to you that this was paid electronically. So it could be online bill pay. It could be, well, you know, again, debit. It could be anything. I typically put in EFT, which tells me that, you know, I paid these bills with a debit card 
probably online. All right, so if I check all these off and, and I hit save, it's going to put EFT next to every single one of these bill payments in my check register. And that way, again, I know that it was paid electronically. All right, so once we pay these, so we got checking, we got the date, we got EFT, the balance is 1201 in the checking account, and it's only 606 being paid, so I have enough money in there. I'm going to go down here and you can do the save and close or save and print. If you are doing print later, you would do save and print. If you are just doing it like I am with EFT, you're just going to hit save and close. And there we have paid those bills. So if I go back to pay bills, you'll notice that those bills are no longer in my accounts payable, my queue to be paid because they have already been paid. All right, any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in another one.